Cheers. Cheers! Welcome to Movie Bitches. Bitches Retro Review Episode 1. We're trying something kind of new and fun. Yes. We um we were inspired because uh the new FX show Feud. Is it called Feud like Colin, Betty, and Joan? I don't know. Or some I think it's something like that. Whatever, who cares? I um, do know that when you told me that there was yeah. a new show about Betty and Joan, but you wrote it out as It was bet. texted. I went, there's a new show about Bette Midler and Joan Rivers? <laughs> and I was like, what? And I was no. like, yes! And then you were like, you're insane, what's happening? You were like, but, so was it like before she died? I was, and I was like, like, how are they going to do it? Because like, Joan's dead, but Bette could do it. And I was like, what the know. fuck are you like, talking they're about? They're both dead. They've both been dead for a while. Text, man, they're confusing. <laughs> confusing. Anyway, this will be the first one. This is the first one. But like, also, so we um, we wanted more T-shirts, and we reached out to um, our fan Rick. Rick draws things, and he um, designed these for us. This one says "Thanks, cunts," <laughs> um, and is fabulous. You can buy the shirts at uh, moviebitches.threadless.com yes. if you want to have a fabulous shirt like this. I don't see why you wouldn't. I mean, I feel like you're gonna get stopped on the street with a lot of questions. Probably. Um, but like, yes. It's great. <laughs> I feel like there'll be a there'll be people that will be like, oh, it's that's all. Wait, oh my what? <laughs> I wish I could do a better Porky Pig, so I could be like, thanks, cunts, but I can't. So sorry. I mean, that was okay. It was like, thanks, cunts. I don't know. Was that okay? It was also that was like a B minus. That's all, folks. So anyway, whatever happened to Baby Jane? Whatever did happen to Baby Jane? Whoa. This movie. So I've never seen it. I had, but not for a while. Um, not gonna lie, didn't love it. I realized watching it back, I love it more in the historical context of film. Sure. Right? It started the hag horror subgenre, right? <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I'm in for this. There's a lot of things in it that are crazy and amazing. It's too long. It's way too <laughs> long. And like, I guess the big thing for me was that like, Joan Crawford just keeps being shocked at like the things that well, look, it's, Betty Davis it's, is doing it's and you're Betty's like the movie. Well, yes. Like you're you're but, watching it and me knowing, you know, like the, so they have this long running feud in real life. Right. I was reading about it and apparently Betty Davis just was like like li like so loving being disgusting. Like she was like I want to look as fucking disgusting as possible and just like be like living in this. And Joan Crawford was like I have to have painted nails. Like she was like I can't not look glamorous. Like she didn't get it and yeah. she couldn't like well, let go. Betty, and that's why Betty Davis worked clear into her 80s and Joan Crawford like became a weird recluse and like disappeared. Well, and Betty Davis clearly knew what movie she was in. Yes. And Joan, Joan like not so much. She's just like, yeah, so I'd like to keep playing my, like, all-suffering Joan roles, where right. it's like, you know, right. oh, like, give me some Mildred Pierce. Yeah, there was this, like, you wanted her to get over it. Well, okay. Like, we'll Joan get... in her career. Yes, I wanted yes. her to be, like, even when you watch um, Torch Song, which is a musical starring Joan Crawford, it's bananas. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> she doesn't know what movie she's in. You're watching and you're like, this is insane. Wait, she's not in on the joke, which kind of makes it fabulous. That's like so if Betty Davis was in it, she'd just be like, yes, you're crazy, you get it. I mean, the scenery that Betty Davis chewed through is just... <laughs> what about that scene where she's sitting on the bed, just like feeling her pussy through her dress? Did you not notice that? I don't think I did. I don't remember seeing don't her on a bed. I don't know if it's like it's a good choice, but she's in like this baby doll dress, just like playing with her dress right here. You're just like... Yikes. Betty. Yeah. Betty. Whoa. I mean, she is kind of everything. I it mean, is. if I've always liked her more, like she, there's the whole, who do you mm, like more, Betty or Joan? It's always been Betty for me because she just has way more movies that are amazing and fabulous and she gets it and right. she was a real bitch. Right. Joan Crawford was like cuckoo bananas. Um, Betty Davis was like, <laughs> called her on her shit, basically. Betty right. Davis was like, no. Sir. <laughs> Apparently, she bought 
a Coke machine to be on set of the movie just to be like, fuck you, Joan Crawford, because she was married to the CEO of Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my personal Coke machine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like, just like so petty and amazing. So that's what I love about this movie is the stories where you're yes. just like, oh, oh yes. <laughs> but please, more. That's the, and like, I think that's the funny thing about it is that it's like one of those things where it's like taken on such a life of its own mm -hmm. afterward, where it's like, Having not seen it, like, you, you almost don't really have to have seen it in order to, like, like you if you, as long as you've heard and seen the clips and whatever, right. exactly. but you are, you are in that chair, you're like, whatever, like, <laughs> yes. You didn't eat your din din. <laughs> you didn't eat your din din. Oh, uh, but the movie by itself. It's too long. It, well, it's just, it's too long and it's just like, I don't know, I kept being like, she was like, so stunned that, like, that, that would, Jane would do this thing, and I'm like, but yeah. Well, there was a lot of like, why is this happening now? I guess it's the catalyst of her They're trying to the sell house. the house, so it like tailspinned Jenny Davis. But there was just, it seemed to escalate very quickly, and then um, we can talk about the end, but should we just talk about it? Yeah. So the end, it's like twist revealed that Betty Davis did not run over Joan Crawford and put her in a wheelchair, but that Joan Crawford wanted to run Betty Davis over, but she got out of the way and she hit a gate that then it paralyzed her. And it was like, hmm, what? Yeah. Also, that didn't seem in character. Like the doctors wouldn't have been like, oh, well she clearly got hit by a car. Like here's the impact point. Here's the, like, like what? It was, it was I was like, I don't think they thought this through. I think they thought we need like a, to like a twist. Oh, what if it's this, right? And it was like, oh, that, <laughs> what? No, that doesn't no. make sense. And then, because then Betty Davis was like, you mean we could have been friends this whole time? And I was like, yeah, wait, why didn't you tell her? What were you gaining? She wanted she her was... to stay around? She was afraid she was going to run away? But like, she was like horrible, horribly abusing her. I don't know, it just seemed weird. It seemed really, it well, seemed like, out of character. Particularly because she had enough money to afford, it to afford Elvira to stick around all the time. So it was like, why is she, huh? It was confusing. It was confusing. So she did, she designed and did her own makeup for the movie. Cause she said something like, um, any makeup designer would like think that their career would be over. Like they For wouldn't do it me, because like, like if they did this, me like this, everyone would be like, you're a horrible makeup designer or whatever. And so she did it herself. Okay. She looks like she's from the last five minutes of Death Becomes Her. Like it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's, um, like amazing. <laughs> it's like makeup upon makeup. Her whole thing was like, I don't think Jane bathes. <laughs> she just puts more makeup on the next day. And I was like, yeah, yes. Everything about her. But surprisingly enough, the thing I actually loved about this movie the most, I mean, aside from Betty Davis just being Betty Davis, was the Edwin Flagg character, the piano player. Who does he remind? Like, loved I, he reminded me of someone and I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't either. I was I like, it was almost up. like Alfred Hitchcock or something. I, were, I didn't know what it was, but I was like, he, he reminds was, me of he someone. He was just like, like I was but, like drawn to him. But also that whole B-plot was like ridiculous. Oh, I wanted to like have a whole movie about him and his mom. Really? I was like, what's going on? I felt like it was so weird and it was just house. there for exposition. Well, I did want to know what was going on. No, I mean like house. like like fill in that coloring book because what's <laughs> happening here? Yeah. When he's just like with a man that she'd never even seen before. Well why should that upset you? Isn't that how I was conceived? <laughs> and he just like walks out and she's like <gasps> Peter Lawford, who is one of the Rat Pack, he's like very handsome and has this no. same kind of voice, like okay, same kind of like, like 
British proper like oh that voice I really want to listen to you talk kind of thing but it would have ruined it yeah it, it it then it would have been way too parallel to Sunset Boulevard where it's like a handsome young guy who comes in you know whatever right. like, it was all the sadder that he was also just a tragic depressed figure with nothing going on in his life and he was like you have even less going on I'll placate you this is so sad like I was just like yep. yeah yep his faces when she's just like, maybe you recognize me. I'm baby Jane Hudson. Everyone just reaction to Betty Davis. I feel like they didn't show anybody her before. Like she like came out fresh, right? <laughs> like she goes to the newspaper and is like placing an ad and the people at the newspaper were like, oh, oh hello. Like, oh, oh, hello woman. Like she clearly smelled, <laughs> right? <laughs> Like, she just smelled like sweat and perfume, right? <laughs> Late days. 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 God. You, could, you could smell her from the screen, that's what happened. <laughs> she was everything, I loved her. She really is everything. I really just got frustrated. I think more than anything, my frustration with this movie is that, like, it shouldn't have happened because, like, Joan Crawford's character is just a fucking idiot. Yes. Like, Blanche, like, what the fuck? Like, she's like, against the window, right? Why doesn't she just shout out to the neighbor, yeah. come help me? There was a lot of, like, you could get out of this situation. Like, when she's, like, she's, like, um, crawling down the banister, I was like, just slide down. Why didn't she just... Just slide down. Why didn't she just scoot her butt down? Just Like, scoot, a little... Scoot. So yeah. long, farewell. farewell. Like, scoot, just scoot, 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 scoot yourself scoot. down. Like, it took yeah. her eight years to get down that well, fucking banister. Weird because, like... So the same, in the middle of the movie, the same scene keeps happening. Betty Davis leaves to like go on an errand, and then Joan Crawford tries to escape. But it's like Joan Crawford is in slow motion. Yeah. And Betty Davis always comes. She, whenever she came home, I was like, that was really fast. That was really fast. Like I was always like, oh, she's home already. I mean, I guess it was a while, so like LA traffic wasn't as bad. Like these days, it takes you well, three still. hours to go to the bank and cash a check. But like, it just seemed like she was gone for two minutes. Okay. Literally, just shout to the neighbor. Right. Hey. Lady. Hey, lady. Hey, lady. Lady. Um, yes, uh, the nosy neighbor was also fabulous. God, fabulous. But that daughter? whole story with the daughter was so weird. So that daughter is Betty Davis's daughter in real life. Love it. You love when she was just like, you never see a plant. You just see that other one, that fat sister of hers. <laughs> <laughs> the only one I ever see is that fat sister slouching around. <laughs> this movie is kind of great. Even though it's not great at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so there's parts about it that you're just like, okay. <laughs> so I think what we're missing, and I think this is Joan's fault, is I read about it. She is supposed to be emaciated, decrepit. There was a whole thing where she was supposed to be like, hadn't left the house in 20 years. Right, like, sure. Like, was very frail. Right, like her things. arm, like she doesn't have strength but to do anything. But there's all these... There was a story about Betty Davis saying that, like, Joan had three different kinds of falsies, which were, like, fake tits, right? And so, and so she, like, insisted on wearing them. Oh, my God. And apparently at the beach, she wore the biggest of the falsies. And, and Betty Davis was like, they felt like two footballs. Like, she was just a bitch. I loved it. <laughs> but, like, I think because Joan didn't lean in mm. as hard to that, like, I can't, like, that's why she couldn't scoot down the stairs or whatever right. it was. Like, she couldn't physically do a lot of things where it seemed like she could. But cause... then again, why isn't she smarter? Yeah, she was dumb. It's just like, oh, I'm Joan Crawford. Like, oh, everyone, you know, like. It was just, it, it was art imitating life. There wasn't a tit for tat. It was just no. Betty Davis tat tat tatting, like, being like, <laughs> and I loved it, but it was one-sided. I mean, and that's why Betty Davis got an Oscar nomination and Joan Crawford did not. Yeah. Because Betty Davis, I mean, it's like the campiest, most absurd nonsense, but it's amazing. Well, this was a really a very financially successful movie at the mm. time. And they were supposed oh, oh. they were supposed to make another oh, movie. Oh, shoot. Who cares? It's Quick shout out to Wine Swans or Wink. Trywink.com slash movie bitches. You get $20 off your first month of wine. <laughs> Sorry, you were saying? Try it out. <laughs> um, they were supposed to make another hag horror movie after this called Hush 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 Sweet Charlotte. Well, that's really hard to say when yeah, I've been drinking is. wine. Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte. Um, and they were all set to do it. They had filmed some stuff and um, Joan's 
story is that she was too ill to continue. Maybe we believe her, maybe we don't. Betty Davis and the director, it's the same director, Robert Aldrich, Aldrich um, say that she was a pain in the ass and they fired her. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> and replaced her with Olivia de Havilland. Sounds about right. There's just all these stories from set about like, them not even wanting to be in the same vicinity. Like Joan had to get like a golf cart. Oh yeah. To like, so sure, cause her trailer had to be a certain amount of feet away from Betty Davis. <laughs> Like shit like that. Like there's so many stories and it's just so good. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Like, Joan like actively campaigned against Betty Davis losing at the Oscars and like said to what was it? It was like Anne Bancroft was nominated but she like couldn't be there. She was like in a play. And Joan Crawford was like, I'll accept the award for you if you um if you can't be there. And then she won, and so Joan Crawford went up and got to accept an Oscar. <laughs> There are three reasons why I deserve this award. We talk about how fucking creepy those baby Jane dolls were. Yeah. That was... Especially... Wait, okay. The title sequence was like eight years long. And it was just like seven different angles and like progressively closer shots of this creepy broken doll. Oh. Why was the doll broken? How did the doll get out of the car? I think it was like a meta, you know, like a visual metaphor. But like, how did it get there? Um... On the ground of the car accident. Was like Jane drunk and carrying her doll with her everywhere? I mean... Was she already crazy then? Yes. The opening is the two of them young, right? And it's like a yeah. total like Gypsy Rose Lee, yeah. like sing out Louise, like situation. <laughs> and I was like living for this. Can we talk about how young Blanche definitely looks like Alyssa Edwards out of drag? <laughs> Like, I, I guess there probably are feuds now, um, but they're less publicized. Right, And I kind right. of miss people, like, watching the Oscar, like, red carpet and, like, the after show and stuff. Everyone's just like, everyone's great. It was really pretty. It's, I loved it. Give an actual opinion. Sure. You don't have to even be mean about it, but just, like, give an opinion. Right. I was, like, Joan Rivers is gone. And, like, she was the only one that was just like, oh, I'm going to tell it how it fucking is. And we are back where we belong, damn it, on the red carpet. Isn't that right, Melinda? That is, uh, Barbara Walter, uh, Walter up for arrested development. Yes, Jessica, Jessica. Jessica. And I miss that. Everyone's just sort of like playing nice and I'm like, this is boring. Maybe Billy Eichner can like take that spot. Oh my god. Oh my god though, but like wait a minute, if he was on the right Yes! I want it happen right now! Cause he was talking about how he loves the Oscars. <gasps> Billy Eichner on the red carpet. Done. Slate. Fashion police. Billy whatever. on the red carpet. Billy on the red carpet. Um, so I would say it's worth it for me if you have sort of this context. Well, I really love, there. like, all of the background stuff. That's right. what I'm saying. It, like, like, it makes the movie then become a whole thing. It's a different thing. And if you know the history of their feud and you know that they just fucking hate each other on set, that's what makes it entertaining to me. And yes, it's too long and it has its problems, but, like, it was the beginning of something that was great. And I'm into it. And Betty is just amazing. And Betty Davis is eating up all that scenery, munch, munch, munch. It's so good. Then I mama's little devil, and Papa says, I've got the brass. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. <laughs> oh. But you are, Blanche. You are in the chair. But you are, Blanche. You are in that chair. I'm excited for this show. Hopefully it does them justice. Yes, I think it will. I think the casting, I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited. To Betty and Joan. Oh my god, yes. No wire hangers! <laughs> Don't forget to eat your dentons.